Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Halo video. Today, I will be rating the all the Halo games in the franchise. I believe we got all of them, or at least most of them. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do my own tier list, and I'll let you know what I think. Let you know what spot I think they deserve. You know, my thoughts on them and stuff like that. So, for those of you who don't know what a tier list is, it's basically just like a place where you kind of just rate stuff. Um, for example, S tier being the best, and then... C tier being average, um, I just noticed there's no D or F tier, so I think I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and modify this one a bit. I kind of just found one, just kind of searched for a tier list, and I found this one. So uh, here, let me see if I could go ahead and, there we go, we're going to add a new tier. All right, so there we go. I went ahead and modified it. I added, I added um, D tier and F tier. Um, so now we can get more of an accurate rating here. Cause I'm gonna be rating all these games because there's definitely some that I think fall in F <laughs> in F tier, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and I think there's a good amount that definitely go in S tier as well for me. So, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and rate these games. I'm gonna let you guys know what I think. Of course, all of this is my opinions, you may disagree or agree with me, but uh, you know, of course, I'm gonna give my reasons as to why you know I believe this game deserves and deserves this certain spot and stuff like that and of course let me know if you agree or disagree with me on some of them i'm sure a lot of people will also ignore all these ads um you know i can't really get rid of them um so yeah some weird stuff might pop up <laughs> so uh just kind of ignore those we're just kind of focusing on this chart here all right so we're gonna start out with halo reach as it's the first one we're going with right now um and this one is kind of hard to rate because I think, it, I mean, back then I used to really love this game. But as I grew up, I kind of saw why this game was kind of, you know, it had its issues and some people hated it. Because I feel like this game, some people just didn't like it and some people liked it. Um, and for me, I was kind of, I, I think I was more in between. I, It wasn't my favorite Halo game, but it definitely does have... A lot of stuff I do like about it, but there's also a lot of stuff I don't like about it. So this one's kind of leaning towards more of a, uh, um, I'll probably give it B tier because the customization in this game is like the absolute best out of all the games. So, you know, I'm going to give it credit to that as well as the custom games. I feel like a lot of custom games in Halo Reach are amazing. I feel like that was kind of the peak of custom games in my opinion. Not only that, but I really love the art style. You know, it's a lot more gritty and dirty and realistic. And I thought it was really cool seeing that in Halo. The campaign was alright. It wasn't... I wouldn't say it was good. But I wouldn't say it was bad either. The campaign was just pretty average to me. Um, there's nothing really that stood... There was nothing much that stood out. Um, but it wasn't bad. It, I thought it was pretty average. Now, multiplayer is where I actually start having issues with it. I was not a fan of Bloom. <laughs> I do not like Bloom. I just think it was incredibly annoying just having RNG to your freaking aim. And I, I just didn't like that. As well as the really annoying armor abilities like freaking armor lock, uh, jetpack, and I believe, what was the other one? I think it's just those two. I think armor lock and jetpack I really did not like. Like, yeah, sure, they were fun. I think they were pretty fun to use in certain custom games, but generally in, like, multiplayer, it was just not fun, because on certain maps, you know, it would be so annoying. You'd get, like, some good position, you know, you'd be, like, shooting people, and then out of nowhere, someone just, like, jetpacks behind you and just completely destroys you, and I don't know, it just kind of broke the map, you know, people would just get to, like, certain spots so quickly and easily, and I just didn't like that, as well as, as, well as armor lock, armor lock was just, <laughs> I mean, the armor lock was just incredibly annoying, because all it really did was delay you getting killed, and I don't know, I just found that really annoying, I, I just didn't like that, I didn't like that aspect of, like, having to wait, like, freaking 10 seconds, or however long it is, and then finally shoot them. I don't know. It just kind of like paused the gameplay. And I didn't really like it. I, I don't know. I, I wasn't much of a fan of it. But um, overall I thought it was above average. Um, it's not S tier or A tier. So A tier for me is like great. It's really great. Um, B tier is like more like good. It was good. A little above average. And then average for me is C. And then D is below average. And F is just absolutely terrible. 
Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at B tier. I think it was above average. I don't think it was one of the best Halo games, but it definitely was one of the better ones. I will say that, and I enjoyed it for what it was. All right, so now we're moving on to the next game, which is Halo 2. And I mean, this is pretty easy for me. This is an easy S tier. Halo 2 was amazing. There's really nothing I could say bad about it or critique about it. I love the campaign. Some people did not like having Arbiter in the campaign. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cool seeing the perspective of the Covenant side. And it kind of just dug deeper into like the Covenant lore and how it works, how their structure works and everything like that. I thought it was really cool to kind of like experience both sides. So yeah, campaign was great. I enjoyed it. It's definitely one of my favorite, cam top favorite campaigns out of the whole Halo franchise. Campaign was just awesome. I loved it. Multiplayer was great itself. I loved it. I mean, for... For Christ's sake, it freaking introduced the BR, you know, one of the most iconic weapons of Halo. The BR was awesome. I loved it. It was it was great. Not only that, the maps were freaking awesome as well. Midship, man, dude, that map, I think that's probably like my favorite map of all time. And there were just so many other good maps. Like, I think Warlock, I believe it's called Warlock. There was Warlock. Although I think that was kind of more like a CE remake, or I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, there's Warlock. There was freaking Lockout. And there were so many other maps. I think most of the maps in Halo 2 were pretty damn good. And then, you know, Xbox Live was introduced in Halo 2. You were able to play online and stuff. I think it was just a great experience overall. There was, like, really nothing negative about it. And I just loved it all. I thought it was pretty... It was perfect for me. I loved it. Uh, before we move before we move on to the next game, I do want to say one more thing about Reach. Um, Halo Reach, I also wanted to note that like the maps on Halo Reach were not that good. There was only two maps that were good, which was C Countdown and freaking, I think it's called Zealot or something. Yeah, there was only like two maps on Halo Reach that were good, so that's kind of why I left it in B tier as well. The maps were just awful. They were not good at all. Only some of them were. Alright, so let's move on to, I think, pretty much everyone's favorite. It's not my favorite, I will say that. Hopefully that doesn't trigger anyone but halo 3 i mean this is also an easy s tier for me it's not my favorite out of the entire franchise i mean i can completely understand why people love this game because it is a good game don't get me wrong but it's not my favorite um the campaign i feel like the campaign was good but i didn't find it as good as halo 2's i don't know i mean the <laughs> halo 3's campaign it wasn't bad but it was good like it wasn't bad but I think it was not as good as Halo 2's or Halo 1's. Actually, you know what? Scratch what I said. I think Halo 2, Halo, uh, not Halo 2's. I think Halo 3's campaign was actually pretty good. Now that I think about it, there's really nothing I could say bad about it. Um, yeah, I mean, Halo 3 campaign was really cool. I loved how they introduced like the Scarab mini boss battles and stuff like that. You know, it was really awesome. Honestly, I yeah, I scrapped what I said. I think Halo 3 campaign was great as well. Uh, multiplayer wise I do like Halo 2's more so I think that's I would say Halo 2's like probably my favorite Halo game um I, I don't know Halo 2's multiplayer was just so good and Halo 3's multiplayer you know it was it was not bad but I just liked Halo 2's multiplayer more um but yeah Halo 3 multiplayer was good itself just not I just liked Halo 2 slightly more than Halo 3's multiplayer and but yeah Halo 3 man I mean the multiplayer was good the campaign was good freaking what else is there they introduced forge for freaking forge man i mean forge is crazy i feel like halo 3 was like a huge bundle and i think that's why so many people love halo 3 because like back then i mean halo 3 just had something for everyone you know it had the campaign if you're into like lore stuff and then it had the casual multiplayer you know big big team battle all that fun stuff um, infection you know all those casual modes that are really fun as well as custom games all that kind of stuff and then there's also the competitive side you know there was just something for everyone and i think that's what halo 3 nailed really well is that this game just like had something for everyone i mean if you were really into like kind of making your own maps they also offered that as well and if you didn't like any of the modes in the freaking game you could make your own mode in freaking forge custom games whatever you can make your own freaking mini game inside this game and i think that was really impressive at least back then for me it was kind of like jaw dropping for me probably because i was more of a kid i was a lot younger but um 
because I don't really know. I, I don't know if back then there was really any map builders in other games and stuff. At least like console wise, I think Halo 3 was like the first one to have like forge kind of stuff, like map building kind of stuff. So I really loved Halo 3 for that. I mean, all around, Halo 3 was definitely great. Um, I did like Halo 2 more, but that's not saying Halo 3 was a bad game. Halo, Halo 3 was amazing. Um, and yeah, that's really all I could say about it. There's nothing really I could say negative about it. I mean, it was just a great, it was a great game. It was like near perfect for me. All right, so now we're moving on to the, <laughs> to probably the most controversial, I would say, the most controversial Halo game. I feel like this game, some people just absolutely hate it, and some people just love it. And to me, I think I'm more on the love it side. Like, I recognize all its flaws, but man, dude, Halo 5's multiplayer, I think it's so good. It's so fun. I love Halo 5's multiplayer. I, I Like, I mean, I've played this game so much, I'm literally level 152 in it. Like, the multiplayer is just so good to me. I just, I just love it so much. And Halo 5... It basically feels, to me, it feels like a Halo 2 point, or not, no, a Halo 2 2.0 <laughs> is what Halo 5 feels to me, and that's probably why I love it a lot, because I don't know, it just kind of feels like Halo 2, except, you know, it's turned up a notch, and you know, I know a lot of people don't like the abilities and stuff, and say it's not like Halo and stuff, but in my opinion, I mean, I still enjoy it as the game it is, maybe it's not the most Halo game, or Halo-like game, but... For what it is, I think the multiplayer is just absolutely like amazing. It's super fun. I love it. But that's literally all it has going for it is the multiplayer and Forge. Forge? Let me talk about Forge. So I do love the multiplayer. Absolutely love it. But Forge, I do love as well. Forge is freaking crazy. I mean, I think it's just a fact that Halo 5's Forge is the absolute best out of the entire Halo franchise. And that's... I mean, until Infinite comes out. <laughs> Infinite might have a better Forge. At least I would hope so. But uh, currently, right now, as I'm making this, like Halo 5 just has the freaking best Forge, man. Like, the Forge is freaking amazing in this. The multiplayer and Forge are just amazing. I love them. They're just like 10 out of 10 for me. Or like a 9 out of 10, because it does have its issues. But those two things are so good. I just love them. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all Halo 5 has going for it. Everything else is absolutely terrible. The campaign, dude, I didn't even know what happened in the campaign. It was just, like, it was, I don't know what was going on. It felt so rushed and out of place. It was, like, thrown around everywhere. I had literally no idea what was going on. The only takeaway I got from the Halo 5 campaign was um, that Cortana went bad. And that's literally it. I don't even remember much from it because it was not that memorable. And, I don't know, it was pretty bad. I mean, I will say, I think the level design on some of the missions was pretty cool. I liked how you could kind of explore. It was a lot more open, and you could kind of find, like, hidden variants of certain weapons. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and the skyboxes, of course. Skyboxes are pretty damn... They look freaking beautiful. But, um, you know, everything else about campaign, it was just awful. I mean, it, it was... it was. I just didn't like it. I didn't even understand what happened, other than Cortana went bad. Um, and there's so many more flaws to this game than I think there is good stuff to it. And for that reason alone, I'm going to have to put it at, um, I'm going to go with D tier. I would say overall, it's a bad game. Um, you know, I love the game. I love the multiplayer and I love the forge, but it just, the flaws just outweigh the freaking good stuff. I mean, microtransactions was introduced, freaking... I mean, Forge, you couldn't even play offline. You had to be online to play Forge. And not only that, but multiplayer itself has its own issues. You know, there's a lot of, like, heavy aim. And if you don't know what heavy aim is, it's basically where you can't move your reticle and it feels like it's heavy. It's literally what it is. It just feels like you have a weight on your aimer and sometimes you can't, like, move it or it feels, like, very slow. Not only that, but, you know, Halo 5 launched literally bare bones. It only had, like, four modes. Forge wasn't even at launch. A lot of the core modes were at, were not at launch. Um, you know, the freaking customization got downgraded. You can only change your helmet and body now. And most of them look the same. It was just awful. I mean, there's just so many more flaws and, you know, good stuff to this game. And for that reason, that's why I'm going to put it at D tier. 
Um, you know, it's a lot, it's in a better state now, but I'm kind of rating them off a of launch because that's the fair way to do it. Because, I mean, it's pretty obvious games over time are going to get better for the most part, I would say. And, you know, Halo 5 definitely has gotten better, but um, you just can't launch a game like that, man. You got to get it right the first time. You know, it's just, you can't do that because it's just not an excuse. You can't freaking launch it like that. So yeah, for that reason, I'm going to put it in D tier, which is basically a bad game. It's not absolutely terrible, which is F, but it is a bad game. And yeah, so I'm going to leave it at D tier. Okay, so now now we're moving on to Halo Wars 2. And this one's a little tricky to kind of rate because it's an RTS game. and I mean, I have played it a lot, so I could definitely rate it. But I don't know, it's kind of weird just rating it between all these other mainline uh, FPS games. Um, but Halo Wars 2, I mean, the campaign, I did like the campaign, but I don't know, there was something off about it that I, it felt like, I don't know, they just, it ended with a cliffhanger, just like Halo 5, and I don't know, I feel like the campaign starts picking up like towards the end, and I don't like that, it feels like, like, it feels incomplete. The Halo Wars 2 campaign just felt incomplete. Um, you know, it started getting really good towards the ending. And I I mean, I think for the reason it felt incomplete is because they literally, they probably like ripped that part out and are using it for infinite. Or at least it seems that way. But, um, you know, overall, I guess the campaign was good. Or rather average. I don't, I don't know. It was a lot better than Halo 5's campaign. That's for sure. But um, it definitely wasn't bad, but it was it was a lot better than Halo 5. I would just say it was an average campaign. Um, it was not bad by any means, but um, I don't know. It just kind of felt incomplete. Now, multiplayer. I think Halo Wars 2's multiplayer was really fun. I thought it was really cool how they added all these like DLC characters later on. They added a bunch of new leaders and stuff. But um, for the for the most part, I thought it was really cool. Um, I felt like it, it felt more balanced in the first Halo Wars. I enjoyed it for what it was. There's really not much else I can say about it. It just felt a lot more balanced in Halo Wars 1. And yeah, it was just enjoyable for a Halo RTS game. It's it's a nice little casual RTS game. And I, I don't know. I mean, there's not much to say about it. I thought it was pretty fun. Now, the only thing I didn't really like about it was the Blitz mode. The Blitz mode felt like so forced in Halo Wars 2. I don't think anyone really played it at launch. I mean, people did play it, but Blitz mode, like, died, like, probably the quickest. Because um, you could just tell, man, that mode was, like, shoved in there <laughs> just so they could make some money. I mean, the mode itself was just kind of boring. Um, I don't know. They literally only had, like, one map for it, so it just felt, like, so forced. They just, like, forced that mode in there just so they could make money off of, like, some microtransaction. Um, and you could, I mean, you could probably say it's pay to win too, because, um, you know, you pay to get cards and level them up and stuff. I don't know, I wasn't a fan of Blitz mode, it really wasn't that fun. I mean, it was cool seeing, like, the unique variants of certain troops and stuff like that, but that's really it. I mean, it was just kind of weird, it just felt really forced in there. Alright, so that's really all I could say about Halo Wars 2. Um, there's not much to say about it, I don't know, I mean kind of hard to rate the RTS game compared to the other games um, but I'm just gonna leave it at C tier I think it was pretty average um, it wasn't something too uh, wasn't something like too like I guess impressive or jaw-dropping it wasn't like it wasn't like a uh, Halo 2 or Halo 3 but it wasn't a Halo 5 or a Halo 4 <laughs> so it was pretty you know it was an average game it was it wasn't bad it was all right it's really all I could say about it Okay, so now we're moving on to Halo Spartan Assault, which is actually a mobile Halo game. And I think this game, I don't know why this game got a lot of hate. For a mobile game, I thought it was pretty solid. I'm going to go ahead and put it at C tier. Um, you know, I'm rating it off as like a mobile game. Because for a mobile game, I thought it was pretty impressive. It was really cool. Um, I don't know why people hated it. I had a fun time playing it. Um, I think it's a good mobile game. And there's really not much else I can say about it. I thought it was just good for a mobile game. All right, now we're moving on to Halo 1, which is the probably the most iconic. Um, I mean, it's the freaking game that started it all. And this is pretty easy for me as well. I'm going to go ahead and put this in S tier. I mean, the same goes with this game, you know, with Halo 2 and 3. You know, same goes with this game. 
you know, it was it was, it was just near perfect, you know, I love the campaign, the campaign was great. Multiplayer, I didn't really play as much, um, but from what I played, you know, it was awesome, it was great. There was really nothing bad about it. I mean, the only thing I could probably say that I don't really like as much now is some of the levels where you kind of have to backtrack. I didn't really like that, but, um, you know, that, for its time, that's kind of how games were. So it wasn't really something too big. But that's really all I could say that I didn't really like about the game. Um, everything else about Halo 1 was great. There was really... There's really nothing bad to say about it. it the three Halo games were just legendary. Alright, so now we're moving on to Halo 3 ODST. And this game, I actually love this game. This game's campaign is definitely one of my top favorite Halo campaigns out of all of them. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it, leave it at a A tier, which is above... Or actually great, not above average. Above average is B. A to me is great. Um, and the reason I'm putting it at A, because honestly I would put this at S tier, but the reason I'm not doing that is because, you know, this game had its flaws. And the flaws were that this game launched as like a full priced game. And I believe, honestly, this game should have easily been an expansion. I don't think it should have been, you know, priced as a full fledged game i think it should have been like at least like 40 bucks or like i would say like 40 at most i think it should have just easily been an expansion to halo 3 because it didn't really offer much it just you know it offered an awesome campaign and it had firefight but like i mean it just wasn't you know it wasn't enough to what i think should be a full-fledged game um because you know it was built off the halo 3 freaking i guess you could say engine um, you know, it was literally just Halo 3, except with, like, ODST skin on it. And don't get me wrong, you know, I love the campaign, and that's why I'm putting it at A. Campaign was amazing, I loved the campaign, and I thought it was a cool change of pace, you know, it was, like, semi-open world. It sucks how you couldn't really be stealthy, um, because that's kind of the vibe it gives off, but you can't really be stealthy in this game. But, uh, I don't know, it was a nice change of pace, and I really liked the game for what it was. It's just unfortunate that... It wasn't an expansion because it easily should have been an expansion in my opinion and that's kind of what holds it back in my opinion um that and that's pretty much it i mean there's nothing much else i could say about it i think it being an expansion easily would have made it an s tier for me although if it wasn't a or if it was an expansion then it would just be part of halo 3 and it would just make Halo 3 even better um it just kind of sucks i don't know if, uh, it's just unfortunate that that happened, but the campaign itself was great. You know, Firefight was fun, um, but it just wasn't worth, in my opinion, a full-fledged, you know, $60 game. And for that reason, I'm just going to leave it in the A tier, which is great for me. So I went ahead and kind of updated the rank things here just to kind of make it more accurate, as you can see. So S is near perfect, and then A is great. B is above average, and then C is average, D is bad, F is don't even mention it. So I kind of updated a bit so you guys can kind of see it better, kind of understand it better on what I think it deserves. Okay, so now we're on to Halo 4, which is another Halo game that, um, you know, it's kind of questionable. I mean, Halo 4, I mean, the campaign... I don't know, I mean, I used to like the campaign, but replaying it, it kind of makes me like, I don't know, I mean, the campaign was, I thought it was pretty good, but, I mean, the gameplay is just so boring, <laughs> like, the levels are just so boring to play through, but the story is cool, so, for Halo 4, the campaign was, I guess, an average for me, you know, because I like the story, but, man, dude, the levels were just so boring to play through. And the Prometheans were just so boring to fight. Like, I don't know. I mean, the story was great. But everything else about the campaign was kind of awful. I didn't really like the freaking maps. Or, not the maps, but the levels. And the enemies themselves were pretty boring. And in terms of multiplayer, man, dude. <laughs> I mean, Halo 4's multiplayer was literally just Halo Reach on freaking steroids. They, like, freaking turned that notch up. And it basically became a Halo Reach 2.0, which is not something I wanted. Um, you know, it, it literally just turned into a COD clone, basically. 
And I was just not a fan of that. I don't really know what made them do that. I really don't understand it. It's just the weirdest decision I've ever seen. I, I, I don't understand how they would just decide to like go the COD route. It's just weird. I don't know. So this game's probably a bad for me as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to put it at D tier. So it was a bad game. Um. Yeah, there's really nothing I could say about it. I mean, Forge as well. I mean, Forge just kind of felt the same as Halo Reach's Forge. I don't think it really improved anything um, other than a couple things, but that was really it. It wasn't a huge improvement, I would say. Because, like, for Halo Reach, from Halo 3's Forge to Halo Reach's Forge, you know, you got freaking... On Halo Reach, you got the freaking huge Forge map, Forge World, uh, whatever it's called. And that was like freaking huge for like forgers back then as well as being able to have objects actually float and kind of like phase into each other you know i feel like they brought like some big features and as for halo 4 didn't really present anything cool other than i think you were able to like duplicate stuff and that was really it that's all i really saw out of halo 4's forge so i don't know it was i don't know everything about it was just pretty bad so now we're on to Halo Spartan Strike, and I've never played this game. I've only played like one mission, but I don't think it's fair to judge it off of that. So I'm just going to leave it at never played. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. So for the next one, we got Halo Wars 1, which... Um, I don't know, I'm going to put it at average. I'm going to put it at C tier. Um, Halo Wars, I mean, I thought the campaign in Halo Wars 1 was way better than Halo Wars 2 campaign. But um, the multiplayer wasn't as good as Halo Wars 2 multiplayer. Um, I don't know. It just felt the Halo Wars 1 multiplayer just kind of felt unbalanced. That's what I liked about Halo Wars 2 multiplayer is that it, it felt way more balanced and stuff like that. As for Halo Wars, you know, basically Halo Wars 2 had a worse campaign but better multiplayer. And Halo Wars had a better campaign. But a worse multiplayer, so they're kind of just they kind of just cancel out. They're basically just both average for me. Um, but I will say I do love the freaking soundtrack of Halo Wars. Like wow, I, I one of my top favorite soundtracks, freaking Halo Wars soundtrack is amazing. Okay, so we're moving on to the next one, which is Halo Fire Team Raven, and I've never played this one, so I can't judge this one unfortunately. All right, guys, so that's the end of my Halo tier list. Here's the results. Here's what I think. We got the three first Halo games at S tier, which is near perfect. And we got ODST at A tier, which is great. Halo Reach at B tier, which is above average. And then we got Halo Wars 2, Halo Spartan Assault, Halo Wars 1 on C tier average. And then we got Halo 5, Halo 4 on D tier bad. And we don't have anything in F tier, which I actually was going to put one there, but... I, it's not on here, so, um, oh well, we'll just forget about that, um, but yeah, you know, I wonder where Halo Infinite's gonna land, for me, I bet Halo Infinite's probably gonna land, like, B tier or C tier, if I'm being optimistic, it'd probably be, like, B tier, um, but yeah, so that's my list, let me know what you guys think, let me know if you guys disagree or agree with me, that being said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, consider liking and subscribing, peace.